no wrestler in the long and brilliant history of the sport at Iowa State has ever captured the imagination the way this young man has. Under high school and collegiate rules, he's never been defeated. That string of wins now stands at 169. He has won so many tournament titles and so many honors as outstanding wrestler at the NCAA tournament, as the man with the most pins in the least time that the count is lost. At this time, I think it would be fitting to recognize his parents and ask them to come down. Mr. and Mrs. Mark Gable from Waterloo, Iowa. I'd like to have Dan come over here now, please. As a little remembrance of our appreciation, Dan, the student body would like to present you with an Iowa blanket. There's a place underneath the eye where we'd like to place the undefeated national champion at the end of the year. We have made room to add the 1970 NCAA champion, the Big Eight champion, Outstanding wrestler at the NCAA tournament, the Gregorian Trophy, and Athlete of the Year. And all you have to do, Dan, is to come through for us. Congratulations, Dan. I really not thought of as West High's wrestling coach. People think of me actually as Dan Gable's coach. I guess my first contact with him was up in the tenth grade, and he was a little guy, a real little fellow that um, not too muscular. And I think of times when he would sit in the wrestling room there, we may have some teens that had come in and want to work out with us, and they wanted to where Dan Gable was. So I'd point over to the to maybe the corner some places where Red Headed Guy would be sitting and they were quite surprised they couldn't believe it he was a kind of a skinny little guy from a 10th grader right on up to the senior in the wrestling room he just didn't like to get beat it was very irritating for him to get beat dan wasn't real nifty on his feet from starting out i think he had in mind though that he wanted to be that state champion the first year and he just worked real hard. His dad and his mother were always back of him, and I think they worried probably more than Danny did. I remember this happening out in the Nationals at Provo. Um, I guess maybe I will never forget it. Dan came out with these team members, and uh, I gave him a tap on the behind. And I just told him that I wanted him to win, and he knew that already. He looked up at me and he said, Mr. Sidney, he said, I'm going to win. He said, if I don't do my best, I won't win. But he says, I'm going to do my best, so I'm going to be a national champion. As freshman, Dan asked a lot of questions. And it came to both Mr. Anderson and myself, to, what can I do to do this better? Still as a sophomore, he still wanted answers to questions. He was a captain, he was picked because he was a leader, and he was a leader from the start, and right on through. Uh, I've always felt a good leader was a good example, and uh, he has been a great example. He had a winning streak going. It was something to look up to as far as the whole team was concerned. And uh, just the feeling of his being a winner and wanting to be a winner made them want to be more so. He's had a number of injuries, but um, 
He's put up with him and kept working out. Well, I don't believe there was anybody uh, in the country that was capable of beating him. I don't think even Grant. In my opinion, he has had a greater influence on amateur wrestling in the last two or three years than any one person has had in the last 25. I usually don't really get too scared until about two or three hours before the match. And then I start worrying a little bit. But uh, I think everybody gets scared before me. If they don't, it must be awful cocky or something. It must be awful sure they themselves. I sort of visualize the setting, the scene, you know, the, where's the action. The match is going, the people in the crowd yelling. Well, there's a big crowd there. It sort of psychs me up a lot more than just if there wasn't a big crowd. I sort of see this while I'm just... I'm just thinking about wrestling, that's all I'm thinking about. The holes are going through my mind like a tape recorder. My arms carry single and double uh, ankle pit. There's holes are just going through my mind. Uh, I just want to throw one after another. When I wrestle, I want everything to be instinctively and not thinking about it. If I have to stop and think about a move, what's coming next? Or, well, then I'm not, I haven't been practicing enough. Usually I can't see it because I'm in the background anyway. And all of a sudden I hear a raise in the crowd and because yeah, some move or some our guy getting pinned or our guy's pinning the guy or our guy got a takedown on the opponent. But as they uh, the crowd rises, cheers and everything, I start just moving that much more and warming up. You know, I start really getting ready for a match. And they when they get excited, I get excited. I just try to reach my peak right before every match. It's hard to describe, it's something inside of you, which it's just try to, you want it to come out when you get out there and wrestle. You build up yourself to a peak, you go out there, then you let that, let it run out of you like, just energy, I guess. You want to go all the time. I go, I probably be involved some way with biology. That's one of my goals, you know, I coach and teach. Not only just to be a good coach and not a good teacher, but really excel in the field. And I look at it as long as I'm going to do it, I really want to do it the best. I think a uh, coach, especially a coach, has to know how your body operates, how your muscles work, how the different systems of your body function. And through biology, that's where I really learned a lot about how to keep myself in shape and uh, how to train. I think it's a lot of similarity between uh, what I like to do in my own personal life, like hunting and fishing and biology. You know, there's a lot of things in biology that's dealing with outdoors, you know, animals and wildlife, things like that. When he was six years old, I started to roll him in the Y and teach him how to swim and so forth. And he was a good swimmer, but he decided that he wanted to wrestle, and I just kind of pushed him a little bit and encouraged him. But you didn't have to do too much of that because he was pretty well much of a self-driver. I definitely think winning builds that the want, the desire to win. This question was asked to my coach uh, last year. Why do you think Dan wins over the next guy? You know, why does he win so many matches? His answer was his desire. He said, I have a tremendous desire to win. And uh, I really never thought about it that much before he said that, but actually it's true. I, I want to win really bad. But I know I can beat Grant. I know I'm better than Grant if he beats me or something wrong. But you never know. I could lose. 
Our lives. I think it's gonna be a lot of people upset. That's one thing I don't like. Cause I, if I got beat fair and square, personally myself, I wouldn't knock me down. But my tell you, my mom, she'd be shook. My dad'd be shook. I lose grand with the headline in the paper. Actually, real proud of him. His record speaks for itself. I think that he actually thinks in his own mind that he can always get in better condition, but I don't think he can. I mean, I don't know how he could. He just works out all the time, and there's not much of any way that he could get in better condition. He's dedicated and he's willing to pay the price. When I was small, and I used to compete against myself all the time. I used to love baseball, and I used to stand out in the front yard and swing a baseball bat for hours and hours and hours and play whole games and sort of talk to myself, you know, think about who's, I'm up to bat on Mickey Mantle now or something, you know. And I used to wear actual spots on the grass, just completely dirt from where I used to stand and swing in this one spot. I used to do other things too also. Like I said, I like fishing a lot. Same thing, I used to just go out and fish in the side yard for hours. Used to catch stringers all. Well, I don't know why. I don't know why, but I just I always loved to sort of uh, dream. I don't know why. Well, I knew the caliber of wrestler that my grip was and is, and uh, I was scared. I had confidence in Dan, of course, but I was still scared because he was so close to finishing out his college wrestling career and that, uh, why take a chance when he wouldn't have had the wrestling, you know? You'd hate to see him get that loss in there amongst all of his wins. Yeah, I know. I know how she reacts. She gets excited. She's been excited ever since I started wrestling. She was so scared. You know your mother pretty well, and you can just tell when she's pretty scared. I can see her. See it in her eyes, I guess. It sort of made me not want to wrestle as much. Because she always says, yeah, you don't want to wrestle Grant, you know, something like that. I remember, oh, you're not going to wrestle really Grant, are you? And I'd keep saying, nah, or something like that, you know. I got real confused. She didn't know whether I was going or not. You know, he doesn't put no pressure on me. I mean, he just wants me to wrestle hard as I can. He wants me to see me win, but if I lose, I'll tell you, he'll be right there beside me, even though I lose. Well, I thought it was a terrible thing. I wouldn't see any reason why two days of champions would wrestle each other. One's up and weak, the other one's down and It was a useless match, because one of them had to lose. And I thought all the time that maybe it might be my kid. And I like Mike Grant because he's a good kid, even though he is an Oki. And I wouldn't want to see him get beat. But if somebody's going to get beat, I'd sooner see Grant than Dan. So I was just nervous as a I didn't like it. I didn't want any part of it. And I told Dan several times, don't do it. Dan just said, let me worry about it.
now he's always dreaded about being a state champion wrestler. Came true. Always dreaded about being a national champion wrestler. Came true. Dreamed about being the winning Olympics, and I hope that comes true. You can just see yourself amongst those other foreign countries, and you're standing in the number one place above, above the other countries. I can see myself stepping up there. I can't see myself in the second, third, or fourth place because I'm shooting for the number one spot. That's why I hope I win. That right there is enough to keep me striving for that goal. Working, working out. Being above everybody else. But this route's a room that we built has worked out real well. It's worked out real well for my son as a result of Dan working with him. Oh, we have a lot of boys out there working out. From East High School here in Waterloo, from West High School, Cedar Falls, and you and I, and Iowa State, and University of Iowa, and Purdue. And when you get a boy like Dan Gable showing these kids, he can show them so much more actually out on the mat, and then hours and hours on the mat, you know, and repetition, repetition is what makes for a good wrestler. A young boy that's interested in wrestling, Dan, he likes to bring him along. If a boy has an opportunity ever to... Uh, beat his record even if Dan is his coach. Well, Dan will make sure that he has the opportunity to do it. And this is the type of coach that Dan will be someday. I just hope that my son can wrestle for him. He'll separate the men from the boys. He'll either have 11 real tough boys out there or he won't have any. It'll be about the, it'll be about the way it'll go. to bring back the gold medal. And if I don't, I'll be disappointed. And I hope the same way the team. I'd say I have, I have a good chance, really good chance to win it. I'd say our team has a really good chance to win it. And I think we can bring home the championship like we did last year. I want to try to pin every opponent. And uh, I do what I hope I can do. I should bring back all the trophies. It's something building up during the year. And this is going to culminate or kind of climax, and so I'm going to push myself a little extra harder because that's the main the main meat of all years, the national tournament. You've got to win this one. you got to be ready to go. That's the one that counts. My final match is against uh, Larry Owings from the University of Washington. He wrestled all year, mostly it's 158 and 167. And then he cut uh, 42 for the Nationals. He did a tremendous job in Tomeki Pipe Pin, 60, 70% of them. They lost one meet during the year. That was to Mike Grant from Oklahoma. The score was 7 to 5. Jimmy Grant, 9 to 4. We planned on it all year long. I think we're crazy, but I think he has a little good chance. Gable has to be favored. He, this is the kind of a boy he is. He wants to uh, he wants to go against the best. And Gable perhaps might be the best of all time, and that's who he wants to go against. There's so much alike, I just really can't believe it. They're both great pinners. See, Larry's pinned, uh, Larry's pinned everybody at his own weight this year. It's only been at 58 and at 67 that he hasn't been able to pin his partners.
It wasn't easy. It wasn't easy to take this defeat, but but I gotta learn. I gotta live with it. It's life, and I'm not gonna let this stop me one bit. My one goal this year was to win the nationals. That goal wasn't reached. That was a big block in my life. But I gotta overlook this. It was really hard for me to walk out there after I lost in front of all those people. But when I stood there and they really cheered and everything and sort of lifted my morale, and I could look up and and uh, take the defeat as. I'm glad I could take it. I gotta overlook this. I gotta work that much harder. Gotta set my goals higher. Now I, I got my goal as the Olympics. I gotta probably have to put out much more than I already have. Be pretty hard. If there's a block before I get there, I'm just gonna have to step over and just keep working. Cause I, I do want to win the next Olympics. I hope all you kids out there will just set your mind forth some goal and reach out and work your way for that goal. Cause uh, I think every person has to have a goal in life and must try to conquer this goal. There's going to be a lot of stepping stones and blocks, but you got to overcome these. I'm going to try to overcome mine. I know I'm going to overcome mine. I'm going to go on. Thank you very much.